I'm jumping off, is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down I hope I get the fly I don't know why, why I feel like I gotta die to be alive I don't know why, it feel like people are standing still With no desire, I'm on the wire Wobbling back and forth, the balance clown I won't be happy, if I'm not moving forward Then send me down, my vibration for eternity Will continue to come around So I gotta do this right, I gotta live I gotta do it now, not another lifetime Time. I don't really need a lot of motivation Cause I know what it is Yes, sir, in the building I am such <laughs> a fan I, I'm a fanboy right now I, I am I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I am such a fanboy right now Welcome everybody <laughs> to the lock I, Look, my mind is all over the place So you guys are going to have to bear with me on this one, man Welcome right. to the Lockout Man Podcast Show, where we park in politics with all our guests tonight. I am your host, Lockout Man, and in today, woo, what can I say about these ladies? What can I say about these <laughs> ladies? The most popular YouTube drivers, Prime drivers, C C C R S T drivers, they was expediters. <laughs> They're, they're YouTubers. Their YouTube page is, is 30 plus thousand, along with their secondary page, which is up there as well. I mean, I, what, what can I say? Singer, songwriter, editor, because Nick is sweet with the, she's sweet with the edit. Yeah. I always said she was. Carla, man, that, uh, I am pleased to welcome to the show, Nick and Carla. What's, oh, going, what's going on, ladies? <laughs> what's going on? I, how you doing? I'm doing a hell of a lot better, man. How how you guys doing? We're good. Uh, like we said, it's laundry day, so I mean, we're glad that's over with. Now we chilling. <laughs> now we now we did well we 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 set this we today's sunday so just to let you guys know that if it comes out on a monday tuesday wednesday thursday this was recorded on sunday today i thought i'd get at them today being that i had some free time and luckily they was able to uh oblige so where where, yes. where where to start man where to start uh let's 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 go back uh let's let's go back in time like where where are you guys from uh where where y'all hail from um me i'm originally well i was born in st louis missouri um so my foundation comes from st louis missouri um but i've been living in the south now more than than st louis so uh between st louis and georgia and alabama those are my three main states yeah, and then me, I was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama, and I moved to Huntsville back in 96. Yeah, so now we're in Huntsville. I can, you know, I, I, I can hear the accent from the both of y'all, so I, I, I know... <laughs> I know Carla's from the South and you're definitely got that. You definitely got that Missouri slang going on right now. It was, yeah, but, but now we got a little mix of, of, of Southern in it since I've been down here so long. So now it's just, it's just both. Yeah. It's you said, you, you said it just, it, it just integrated in you, huh? Yes, exactly. Yep. All right. Yep. So life, exactly. be so life before trucking, man, what, what, what you guys was doing before y'all got into the trucking field? Well, me, before I got into trucking, I was working in a call center. Um, and I think I worked for them for like 13 years. And then I kind of got laid off and I was chilling for like over a year. I was just like, you know what? I've been working all this time. I'm just, I'm about to chill. And it was like a little over a year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, me, I was at a call center, but I've always been creating. So creating and working at some worker B job, some yeah. boring job, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Put me to sleep. Wake me up when I'm done. You know, type <laughs> shit. Oh, can we curse on here? Yes, you're good. Can we curse? Yes, okay. you're, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to limit it, you know, so it's YouTube friendly. But yeah, yeah, boring job, but still creating on the side. 
so so how did so how how did you how did you guys come together? Oh, oh. we met at work. It was Carla was my boss. <laughs> Carla was my boss. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, and, uh, she went on. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um I met her at when I started working at a call center direct TV. Um I mean it just the, the, I guess the universe everything played out where it just brought us together. Okay. okay. When she first saw me when she first saw me, she was just like I know, we were just talking yeah. about this the other day. Yeah. I told Nick I was kinda in the mode where I was like you know what? I'm done. I'm done with relationships. And I'm at work and then I just see her walking and I'm just like minding my business. Who is this? <laughs> I got to know who this person is. Yeah. So mm. at work. Yeah. <laughs> when when did you when when did you guys realize that y'all was, you know, that y'all was, you know, kind of in 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 into females? Um, well, me, I didn't realize I was into females until I believe it was like um, 2012. It was like 2012, 2013. And um, it caught me off guard because I was genuinely just friends with this female. And we used to hang out, you know, just like how girls hang out. And I just found myself attracted to her. So for me, I had to sit back and kind of reflect and was like, you know, what's happening? Why do I feel like I like her? So I went through that whole roller coaster of, okay, do you really like a female and what's happening? Yeah, uh, mine's happened back in like grade school, right around the time when I hit puberty. Um, you know, you think that I would be attracted to young boys, but it actually turned out to be grown women. So <laughs> that's when I started like girls. <laughs> And they wasn't girls. They started off as women. <laughs> <laughs> you say you you say you you just skipped the whole you just skipped the whole yeah. thing and, and, and just it's said right. and it's said all women booty. Just that's said Bobby, like, I, I I I like me a, I like me a fine woman. That's what's up. That is what's <laughs> up, man. Uh, so you, so you, Nick, you kind of you you kind of knew that you know you you was more attracted to females. Uh, back at an early age yeah yeah did you did, yep. how did you did you come out at that time uh to your to your to your family at that time or no uh at that time i didn't but i've, I've actually told this story before i was actually thrown out of the closet that's how i like to put it uh mainly because uh, while i was still trying to figure everything out Uh, The church that I was going to, we were going to church heavy. Like every day we had a reason to go to church. And uh, one of the the ladies who was a preacher there, she called me in front of the church. And um, right there just asked me. um, I mean, she took the mic away from her mouth when she asked. But I'm pretty sure people know how to read lips. Um, And she asked me, you know, Shell, are you dealing with lesbianism? And I said, uh, I was, you know, I didn't know what to do. But I did answer. And I said, yes. As soon as I said yes. She went in. Hold on, I'm gonna get my hand in the camera. She went in, put that damn death grip on my head, and then after after church, we went to the back, and my mom went to the back, and then I had to tell my mom what was going on. I didn't even, I barely knew what was going on. So wow. I say I was thrown out the closet because I didn't get a chance to figure it out for myself. Wow. And how? Yeah. How? And then uh, once that happened, once that happened, it kind of put like a, it, it put a, a, like a. The relationship, a strain on the relationship with my mother, uh, it was it was rough in the beginning. You know, while we were trying to figure everything out. Wow, that's 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 kind of crazy. Hold on, I think I'm frozen. I'm jumping off. Is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down. I- oh, wow, that's that's crazy. I mean, how did you feel about the church after that? I mean, you had to feel some kind of way after that. Well, I mean, at the time, I felt like we were doing the right thing because uh, what the the pastor and the first lady said is they said, uh, I'm glad that we're catching her now before, you know, she hit like her 20s or, you know, like because I wasn't even 18 yet. So she said, I'm glad we're catching this before she hit her 20s, because when she hit her 20s, you rarely can get them to come back from that. 
So I thought we were doing the right thing. So they took me through the process of like uh, just a lot of extra church and praying and all that stuff. And uh, and this is what happened. The, the heart the heart wants what the heart wants, right? I mean. Yeah, they couldn't pray it away. Wow. They sure couldn't pray it away. <laughs> they tried, though. They really tried. I tried, too. Well, uh, have you? It just didn't work. Now, now I've been following you guys for 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 a long time, for a long time. Right when you guys started, I, I've been following you guys. Um, so Thank you. I, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, my next question is probably kind of stupid because I know Carla have kids, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. you guys have been with guys before. I have. I've been with guys before, yes. And, you know, I've been with messing around with girls and women since grade school. So if anything that I had in, like, elementary or early middle school, it would be like a little play boyfriend or something like that. But not with, like, a grown man or, you know, anything like that. No, I haven't. Now, now, Carla, you, since you, what was you married? Uh, was you, if I'm not mistaken, you, yeah, you was married, right? Yes, I so, was. So you totally got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so coming out to your, to your family and your kids, how, how did that, how did that work out? Well, I always say I didn't have an official come out, um, I just didn't deem it necessary to do that. But um, I talked to my kids. That was the most important thing to me was to talk to my kids um, because I've heard, you know, sometimes kids, they don't like it or it caused them to have problems in their life. So once I talked to my kids and they were kind of like, I mean, I know, like they like Nick, you know, by that time they had already um it's, saw her and had been it. around her and they were just like okay they was like it's your life like you can do what you want to do and then when i asked them i said but i don't want y'all to feel like you know it's causing problems with you all growing up or somebody saying something and my kids they're kind of like me they're like i don't care what anybody say you know as long as they don't be disrespectful so exactly what well, now was you still married um when you came out or no no i wasn't okay so you did you you didn't have to have that conversation with with, with your husband or the kid well, well now the kid's father sort of say yeah so eventually i had a conversation with him but we wasn't together um and of course like at first it was hard for him but, um, you know, a lot of times when kids are involved, I think that's what a lot of people have an issue with. Or they feel like you're going to, I guess, kids will see things they're not supposed to see. When they don't realize we're more cautious about being around kids and what kids see than they are. You know, it's like. A man and a female, they can walk down the street, they can kiss, they can grope each other, and they don't think anything of it. But if they see a same-sex person do that, it's like, yeah, oh, it's, the yeah. world is on fire. Exactly. But us, we are more cautious about it because we do feel like we don't want to offend anybody when we shouldn't have to walk around feeling like that either exactly exactly big ups on that one what uh what has it been what what has been what has been the worst and the best part of discovering you guys sexuality um i think the best part of discovering my sexuality once i got through uh this the uh, i guess i'll call it mental torture because you know when you're in church uh, as a young person and they're constantly telling you you'll go to hell for what you're doing you know, for, for the same sex situation um, and, and overcoming that when I overcame that and, and made the choice of, uh, to live my life the way I wanted to live it, it allowed me to apply that in, in other uh, parts of my life. Like uh, as far as work, you know, like not wanting to have that traditional job or that traditional white picket fence type of dream and just kind of take my own path. So I was able to apply 
you know, that to everything uh, in my life. Okay. Yeah, I guess for me, um, I guess the worst thing for me was the judgment as far as coming from family or people that's close to you yeah i was about to, i was about to ask about the support uh the support system did you guys have that yeah at first i didn't but you have to realize um my family they were around me i was grown i guess my kids were they had reached the age of 12 and <laughs> like 14 so it, it kind of like you know caught them off guard too so i can understand why it was hard for them so i think that was the worst part for me but the best part is i guess i felt like when i was talking to guys i feel like sometimes guys miss things with females because yeah, they do. feel like we take things too serious or we worry about things and they tend not to listen to a female. But um, I think the best part for me is just really feeling like I have a support system yeah. um, with me. Now, when it comes to me, as far as the, my family support, um, of course, initially that, that rough period that I had with my mother, it was, it sucked. Um, but once we both got past that, the support that I have for my mother, like I have the best relationship with my mother. She's more understanding to um, LGBT, uh, mm. the LGBTQIA elemental community. <laughs> the alphabet and, community. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, and then also um, when it comes to my family, I really, I feel like I'm blessed when it comes to my family because, you know, my family, they're based out of St. Louis, Missouri. So they're not in that Bible belt. Um, so I didn't have to worry about a lot of the judgment that comes from people who grow up in the South, uh, because we all know that we're not perfect. We all, you know, got our own shit going on. So they ain't worried about like shell and who she loves. You know, they just worried about shell and is she happy? And that's what I love about my family. How yeah. about, yeah. how, how about, I think, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, as far as like in our life now, both of our families yes. are really supportive yes. of us. Yes. And they think we're a really strong team together. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see I can see that in y'all family vaults. Y'all y'all fam y'all trump tight with y'all family. And that's something that's yeah. something that's <laughs> something a lot of that you know, not just you guys, but that's something a lot of people can't say that they got family support. That's you know. Very true. Mm hmm so yeah. they definitely can't say that what about your what about your father i hear you 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 speak highly of your mother but wh where's your father at in all of this uh okay so when it comes to my father i really don't talk about him often um but um when he's never really been like a part of my life like that i mean he would have moments where he would pick me up or whatever when i was a kid and all that and I will grow a bond with him. But what happened is he's in the church. Um, he's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he might be a pastor now or something, a preacher or something now. But um, when I was going through this change, I was living in Georgia. We, My mother, she moved down to uh, Hinesville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, when we came back to St. Louis for my senior year of high school, that's when, you know, I started hanging out with my father again. But when he saw me for the first time, you know, there was a, a, a change in the way I dressed, the way I carried myself and everything. Right. Um, and he didn't say anything to me, but he, you know, got on the phone with my mother and he kind of asked, he was like, what's what's going on with Shell? Like, why is she why is she looking a little hard? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, <laughs> the saggy and jeans, the, the uh, backwards cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't even I didn't even have a backwards cap on. I, I tried to soften it up when I went around him, but I mean I'm his daughter, so he knew. Yeah. Um and um when after he had the conversation with my mother, it, it kinda pissed me off because I was like, damn, I was there the whole time. Why didn't he just talk to me? Right. And then um afterwards he decided to come over and have a conversation with me. But when he had the conversation the entire time, he threw the Bible at my face and that mm. made me reject it. So that's what happened there. You you know, uh, I I guess fathers, guys in general, just can't handle their 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 kid. You know, 
being a part of uh you know being a part of the, L, the being a part of the 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 community you know uh, a lot of kids have a hard time it's easier to come out to your mom's i mean is you know your your mom's pretty understanding your mom's going to love you regardless you know she she going to love you but your 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 father is you know the father on the other hand is 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 a little bit harder for him to accept you know accept his daughter or his son to you know to like the opposite sex or the same i hear sex. what you're saying but really I, I think it just depends on that person because you know you have men some fathers who can't accept it look at Dwayne wade this mug going all out with his kids that's what i'm saying you have some women who will reject their kids you know what i'm saying so it really just depends on that human being and, and how they accept i mean how they you know take it you know what i'm saying yeah but it's, it's fathers out there who who will accept it and, and there's some that won't just like there's women who will and won't how about how, how about your father uh carla um i don't have a relationship with my dad my dad has not been in my life since i was 10 years old i can I, yeah i can feel that my my father hasn't hasn't been in my life so i really my mom says he passed but i really don't know <laughs> i mean she said he passed like yeah but i i'm you know i was kind of curious about you know his side of the family so what about what about your father's side of the family have you have you spoken with them have you had any contact with them or a relationship um so i have this aunt that um keeps in touch with me it's his sister and um sometimes she'll let me know if something is going on with him i think one time she called me and she told me my dad was in the hospital and she said um i'm just letting you know she was like you don't have to feel obligated to check on him she was like because i know he wasn't there for you right but she said i just felt like i needed to do my due dil diligence and i told her i appreciated her for that and um yeah that's pretty much it i have a few cousins on that side we'll message every now and then but they are my friends on facebook yeah that's kind of like how it is with my dad like I, I love my dad and i know he loves me he'll reach out to me every now and then on facebook or something like that you know we have a little conversation but it's like once you get like uh, once you get a certain age it's kind of like if y'all didn't yeah. build that bond with yeah. our kids it's hard and to I'm build it as right it's it's yeah, hard to build I, it as I, as an as an adult yeah it's like i'm moving and shaking i'm on to, it's like it's like you know and yeah. and the success and and the success that you guys has garnered with you know this this past few years i mean you kind of like tried you know the thought probably i don't know if it came across your head but is he really coming in because of 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 he loves me or is it because of the success that i have garnered no my dad he's always loved me like he i'm his firstborn so i i know that he loves me yeah. you know it's just the whole like you said some men they just can't they they can't take it when they're when they're kid especially their baby girl turn out you know a lesbian and then not only a, a lesbian but she had to be like the the, the more masculine one so <laughs> yeah. you know like, hey you, you had to be I was about to ask that. <laughs> yeah. but you know i think sometimes it can be hard too because i think even in his situation you don't ever know the thoughts that they're having and he could have a thought of I dropped the ball and this could be why she chose to go this route because yeah. he wasn't a good example of a man. Yeah. So. I, I often think about that. Like, you know, uh, well, never mind. I'm gonna wait until you ask one of your questions and then I go into it. <laughs> That's a good yeah, I, mm, it's something to think that's something to think about. Uh all right, so you guys, uh, like I say, you guys are the most popular YouTubers right now, uh, popular team truckers. And being that you guys are uh, uh, showing what a lesbian couple is all about, what is the perks of being a lesbian? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll say this. Like, when it comes to perks, um, I just, I don't really know if they're, okay, okay, okay. I think there is a perk for being a lesbian. I'll say this. Um, when I was younger and dating, 
like whenever I we go to the locker room, you know, all girls locker room. I mean, plus. Uh, <laughs> when, I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college, and you know, it's all girl dorms, you know, and then they have a curfew where all the boys got to go, you know, to their side, which is way across. But I'm like, I'm cool. I got everything I want and need right here. <laughs> so that was my first. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "I got yo, y'all, yo, yo, bye. I'm, I'm good, yeah. right, bro? See you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> How about? But, but um, in all seriousness, when it comes to relationships, I think lesbian relationships they can be good and they can be tragic, just like heterosexuals. They can be a hot yeah. ass mess, just like heterosexuals. Yeah. Sometimes." I don't want to say worse. I, I'll say they all, they all, you know, can be good and some bad. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Any perks you can think of? No, I can't say. I mean, other than what I mentioned before, I feel like it's easier for me to have a conversation um, with Nick about any and everything. So you know, it's crazy though. Like I actually didn't really realize there was much of a difference when it came to communication with women and men because Carla would always say it. But, you know, me, my family, a lot of my family is just it's just made up of a lot of strong women. So that's all I'm really around. And even my friends, they always tend to be heterosexual girls. So I just thought we all humans just talked, you know, and shared our feelings and thoughts. But Carla would say that there's a difference. I'm like, what do you mean? We all human. But Carla, you know, I hang around her ex-husband. I hang around her uh, brother-in-law, her brother. And I was like, whoa, and her son. And as I'm talking to them and realizing there is a difference, I'm like, wow, we do communicate a bit yeah. different. Like, we women, we talk more. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can. Because it's some men it's that It's some men about. that can talk, too. Like, yeah. Elton, he can talk. But but when it comes to, I don't know, being vulnerable, we're more susceptible to being vulnerable, I guess, yeah. with each other. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I don't know what it is. But it is a, a difference. And I didn't realize it because I never really hung around men like that. Now, you know, I... Uh... <clears throat> I was told that I am more, I am more like conversational, more talky. Like, you know, when, when they, when, when people see me, you know, when I do my interviews and all like that, I'm more animated. I, I speak, I, you know, engage, but when they're around me, they like, yo, you the most quietest ever. Why you, what's on your mind? I like nothing. Well, I'm just chilling. I can agree. I can agree yeah. with that because like with me, I have an alter I have several alter egos where like, you know, like for example, we have the Carla and Nick channel. I don't know who the hell she is. She's this goofy, you know, extroverted person. And then uh, but in real life, I'm real laid back yeah. and I don't like doing the most talking, being around a lot of people. Right. It's like different right. personalities, different situations. Yeah. Right. That's how I am. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't mean to proceed it that way, but but yeah. But when people actually tell me like, yo, bro, you you the most quietest, mm, whatever. I'm like, I am. But when they but say but also, when they say when I get behind this mic, though, they be like, yo, you're a different dude when you're behind the mic. I'm like, oh, OK. Well, thank you. <laughs> it, it could also like if you're a creative it's like you know what it takes to put out good content. And you know that that quiet, you know, reserved personality, it, it doesn't look good on camera. Exactly. So, of course, you're going to flip the switch, you know, when you're on camera or behind the mic. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. uh, do you get, yeah. so do you, so do you feel that re that lesbian relationships, even though both parties are female, are there gender roles still? Like one partner is a little bit more female than the other one. Like in terms, okay. of, like in terms of domination, holding a door, maybe killing a spider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in every relationship, there's uh, you have more masculine and 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 one that's more feminine. Um, but th I don't think that there's a specific role that yeah. is played in that relationship. So, like, it may be a day I see a spider, and you know what? Today, I just don't feel like killing the spider. Carla, that mother looks scary as hell. Can you get it? Yeah. And then it may be a day Carla see a wasp, and she like, woo, Dick, can you get the wasp? And then I step up, and then I do it. So we just kind of, you know, yeah, make it work. Yeah, it's the same way if 
something needs to be done, we both like help each other out. It's not like, oh, this Nick role or this Carlos role. Now, are there certain areas where uh, I may perform better than Carla and vice versa? Yeah. Yes. And we just stick to what works? Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's not like a role, a specific role. Like you're the more masculine, so you need to, you know, take out, take the, out trash the garbage. All the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So both of y'all take out the garbage. Good. She say, bump it. I'll take the garbage out this time. No, <laughs> no, I got it. Time, I take out the trash, but, you know, <laughs> we both yeah. take out the trash. Now, I know when I, you know, when I was married, it was always like, why am I taking out the trash? Like, so that's a difference. Yeah. So maybe whoa, that was a whoa, first Whoa, year. whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up now. Hold up now. You, 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 you. I didn't take the trash. Now, I have taken it out, but... For the most part, oh, I didn't take okay, the trash. okay. I'm about to say, homeboy better do, you know, better take out the trash, you know. Yeah. <laughs> my mom's made me take yeah, out like the trash I... all the time. <laughs> yeah, my son does too. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the convenience though, like, well, when it comes to doing like manual labor, like today the guy, he always do all that shit. I can see the benefits of that. I just wouldn't want to go, you know, the other other stuff that he may want but boy when, they, when i like if i go around her family like she got a lot of men in her family they're like oh no nick sit down oh no i'm gonna take this i'm like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> take it. I, I love it yeah you know oh, you say no dude yeah, okay cool i'm i'm thank yeah. you <laughs> do you <laughs> do you guys um does does having a female partner give you give you an immediate advantage in understanding your partner over having a male partner? No. Ooh, no, because um, yeah, it doesn't, and it's mainly because like me and Carla, we just recently kind of been working through something when it comes to the love language. The love languages, you know, you have the five core love languages that a human um, and receive and give love uh whether it's um was it quality time uh words of affirmation uh what is the other one acts of kindness. physical touch you know those yeah. things and depending on who you are like carla she receives love the most through acts of kindness me yeah. i receive love most through quality time and physical touch so whole time i'm thinking when i touch carla and when i uh spend quality time she's feeling the, the most love but she's not because yeah. i'm not doing like this, the act of kindness stuff and i'm like dang yeah so you know i i definitely don't think it's it's easier because it's two women all right because you still gotta take that time to, get them to understand them it's the same is it's the same relationship goes between uh between y'all two like you, you guys you guys have your arguments y'all got you guys have your your bouts like yo i don't like what you're doing or something like that and y'all had to take time out from each other is like you know like men and women do do you do you guys yeah. go through the same thing as well yeah we go through the same thing i think the most important thing you know whether you're in a relationship with a female or a guy is actually listening to your person and being there for them yeah that's the biggest thing because yeah. even like the relationships that i've been in um just say for instance like i said with the guys that i talk to a lot of them are kind of absent in places where they need to be present. Even if you're trying to talk to them, they're still absent. They're, they're not listening. It's like their focus is somewhere else. Yeah, and what I'm learning more and more, like Carla and I, we've been together, it'll be seven years in October. Wow. Um, and what I'm learning more- Congratulations. Yeah, I've never been with someone that my life. <laughs> thank <laughs> so, you. Thank you. So what I'm learning more and more, like for example, when it comes down to arguments, a lot of times, you know, we're trying to, when we're arguing, it's like, I'm trying to get Carla to see my point and Carla's trying to get me to see her point. But really what should happen is I should be trying to see Carla's point and Carla should be trying to see mine. But yeah. a lot of times it don't happen like that. But I'm learning more and more how important that is. Yeah. All right. So before I go into the next, uh, next, because I got questions, got a lot of them. But before I go into the next session of questions, I, I do want to I do want to say this right quick. Look, man, look, I 
I was hurt. I want to be honest. I I was hurt. You want to know why I was hurt? I'm. Why was you hurt? When you got, I already know. When you guys cut your hair, I was. <laughs> I was like, no! no! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. But um, y'all, what? Uh, what? 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 Came, what? What? Uh, pres- what was? What was the cause of you guys uh, cutting your hair? Because you said in your video, because you did make a video. She's so played, child. Yeah, cut that first one. You did it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. This one? Y'all, look. Oh my fucking goodness. Mine's too. That's it. Now I need to turn it back. Alright, hold on. We need to put, start putting them in the bag. So, um, yes, we are cutting our hair. Uh, mainly because there's just a, a shift, a transition that we're going through in our life. And Carla, she initially brought this up. About the, the reason mm-hmm. why you guys cut your hair. And it was a process to cutting you guys' hair. So, what was... What was the process of that? Yeah, so I guess I was the reason behind cutting the hair. Oh. And um, <laughs> it was, I wish you would have been there to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I don't think I could. I, because y'all y'all had the nice, the, the nice locks going on and all like that. And I was like. Oh man, no! But but I I seen the I seen the spiritual trans transformation of you guys cutting your hair because as India Irie says, you're you're not your hair. So yeah, yeah. So the thing was when I first began my lock journey, um, I was actually going through my divorce and um. It was just something I was just like, you know, something I was like, I'm starting to have problems, you know, in my marriage. So it was something that I was doing, trying to kind of be still and just see which direction I needed to go in. But um, through all that and ending up being in a divorce and then I was in a relationship with another female. It was kind of like when I got with Nick, it was a moment where I felt like it was peace like it wasn't chaotic anymore but I felt like I was still holding on to all of that negative energy that I had been through and I felt like sometimes that was interfering with my mood so I just felt like you know what I just want to cut my hair off and I want to start over and um when i first told nick nick was like what she was like no (laughs) like she was totally against it and um i would wait i think i had to go to her like two or three more times it's like i just didn't take the no i waited and then i went back and i would introduce it again and then finally she listened to my reason why and um that's a beautiful thing that's how it happened that's a beautiful thing. So, Nick, she came to you. What was going on with you? I know you I was, was like, like my locks, lock. like my luxurious locks. <laughs> I was like, I don't want a bald head chick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and, and me, I'm up here. I'm like in the IRE. I'm like, girl, I am not my hair. <laughs> yeah. but, um, once she so 
told me the reason. I kind of thought about all the things that I went through, and then also in support, like in a way to support her. I was like, shit, I'm going to cut mine off too. They were really inconvenient how long they were. But even though I'm actually trying to grow my hair back out again, but I don't think I want to do the locks thing. Um, but I mean, it's, it's hair, you know. Yeah. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. <laughs> but yeah. But I do. I do know. I do know. Some people are can be attached to your hair and you don't even realize it. Because yeah. I still have moments where I be missing Carla hair. Um, <laughs> you know. When y'all when y'all did that particular video and we'll we'll prob we'll we'll get into YouTube uh shortly, but when you guys did that particular video, uh the comments went berserk. What, what were some of the comments, uh good or bad, that you guys came across in, in the comment session? I mean mainly from women. Women were more supportive of it because i guess they could understand yeah um if the men for the most part they were but then you had some of them they it's like some men just love their women with long hair yeah. you know what i'm saying it's more feminine and you know just just what they like and, yeah. they, and then from listening to kevin samuels i hear that men are more visual so i could see how we kind of you know broke some of our, our guys uh hearts but yeah. you know we had to go ahead and take it off so <laughs> you know <laughs> Hey, I mean, I like a short hair woman. I mean, hey, like, like, like we just said, you're, you're not your hair, man. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about being in the community, man. The uh, L, L G, L G T B Q community. Um, how did the, I know the alphabet community? How did uh, how how did the community? Before I ask my one uh, set of questions, how did the community embrace you guys? Um, I, I, like I said before, I I don't know what it is about me, but I always hung around heterosexual women. I mean, I had my few like you know stud friends or you know gay girlfriends that I would hang with, but I wasn't really active in the community because it would get really messy sometimes because it's almost like they're kind of like, oh, she gay, like oh, I want her, and then I want her, you know, I want her. So it's just it's real messy because it can be small. So I tend to just stay to myself. Yeah. I have my few little friends and I, I like hanging around a lot of heterosexual women. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think for me, um it was kind of the well. <laughs> so for me, I it was like I had my normal friends. I had friends that were heterosexual and friends that were gay. So, I mean, it wasn't like I was just in the world of, you know, of gay people. You know, I it was just like nobody treated me any different. Even yeah. the people that found out, you know, like, okay, she's in the females now. Like, I didn't go through the whole look. Oh, she might like me, and I'm glad I didn't, cause yeah. I would have had to be like, I don't like everybody. Yeah. You know, I have a type. Yeah. Like just because I'm gay and you're female, don't mean that I want you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, yeah. Man, so what is the um? Hold on, let me bring it back. All right. So what is the so to you guys? What is what is the biggest misconception of 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 well, what is the biggest misconception that lesbian women face? To me, I feel like uh, something must have happened. A man must have hurt you or something. The reason it's, you like females. That's, that's, that's what I always get, especially, I guess, because I dated guys before. When people hear that, they like, oh, somebody didn't right. treat you right. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with that. I, you know, in a, in a relationship, it's two people. So one person can't cause an issue. So I've been in a relationships where I can clearly say I was young, immature, and probably messed relationships up. And vice versa, the guys have messed it up as well. Yeah. And uh, I think mine is that we want to be men or that we hate men. Um, <laughs> I don't hate men and I damn, damn sure don't want to be a man. I, I don't want to be a man because I feel like the world, I don't know how the world treats a man, uh, especially a black man in America, but I feel like the world, it comes off a bit softer to me because I am a woman, no matter, you know, my hair long or short. It's like when I go to certain places or businesses, 
the men, they may open the door for me. They may, you know, just treat me a certain way that if I was a man, you know, then they wouldn't look at me or treat me the same way. So, you know. Wow. I don't know why I said, but I don't hate men and, and I don't want to be a man. I, you know, I, you know, coming up, you know, as a young guy, I, I would think that. I, I really was. I mean, I, I really would, you know, coming up as a, as a young man, you know, in my 20s, you know what I'm saying? And I I would see, you know, I would see two women together and all like that. And I'd be like, huh, damn, they fine. Like, what what did the dude do to them? Like, but then as I, <laughs> as I got older, you know, as I got older and more mature about it, it, I started seeing it from a different perspective. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, they, you know, they, they, they like each other. They, you know, and, and love, love just hits when it hits, you know? Yeah. yeah Cause I don't know what made me attracted to, to women when I was that young. Like, I don't know why the, the, the switch just, just did flip like that. You know, yeah. when I started getting urges, sexual urges, it just started going towards women. I didn't know what was happening. All right. All right. So, have you ever have have anyone have anyone of you ever felt uh personally oppressed as a lesbian did i pronounce that right oppressed no. oppressed no yeah. oh, okay. i haven't no um it's just you know because you know I'm a, I'm a black woman in america and it's just like i what i've learned more and more is that i can choose to play a victim role or you know, woe is me, but I just never been that type of person because of how the women in my family are. So if, if I am oppressed, I'm not, I don't feel it. You know, I just, I, I hustle and I figure shit out and I make it work like everybody needs to do if they want to make something happen in their life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys feel like, like, have you now coming up, you know, coming up in as as being that the world has changed and accepted the the community a lot more better than what they have accepted it before. But before that, you know, when they was, you know, trying to transition to their feelings, have you guys been, uh, been, I don't know, have, have y'all guys been like bothered or any anybody came and disrespect you in any kind of way? I, I think it's because of the way we um, carry ourselves. The way we carry ourselves, but then not only that, like you mentioned, times are different now, and a lot more, a lot, a lot of people are more accepting. So um, hold, I hold think on, just, hold on, ladies. So where you do your podcast from? Are you doing it from your truck or? I do it from the truck. Yes, that what makes me kind of different. So you doing your truck right now? Yeah, I'm in my. You yeah. in your truck right now? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in my truck right wow. now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's I, so dope. Thank you. Thank you. That's what makes me kind of different, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, let me. Yeah. See. Hold on. Yeah, show us. Because I want to see your mic set up and stuff. Wow. You don't figured it out, didn't you? <laughs> you said these trucks can't hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what's up. That yeah, I got up. I got a I got a boom arm attached to, you know, attached this, you know, I'm in a Volvo, so this one of the Volvos that didn't come with no no doors or nothing like that. So I was able to um uh, I was able to, you know, connect the boom arm to the bottom of the of the of the thing and then just have it come over. So oh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of, you know, I got tired of the, you know, I got tired of the the vlog style of, you know, when I was doing my my videos. But I started. Uh, I said bump it. I'm just going ahead and just set it up and just just talk about whatever I could talk about or interview whoever I want to interview. So that's what's up. Yeah. Ladies, all right. So we're back. We're we're back. We're on. We're good. We're good. Y'all hear me good? All right. Um, where uh where did we leave off at? Where where did we leave off at? Uh, where did we leave off? Uh, misconception, oppressed. Uh, well, I I guess. Oh, uh, I think what I was about to say is, um, I think we don't go through 
you know, things because times have changed now. So say, for instance, we have a neighbor and he's what, in his 70s or yeah. about to be in his 70s. And um, he have his wife and she's a little younger than him. And you would think, you know, usually people that age, they kind of still are standoff about it. But they come over, you know, they accept us for who we are. They invite us over to their place. They're so sweet. So I think because of the times, you know how they always say you pick your parents. I feel like we pick the time that we live in. And it's, um, well, fortunately, it's a great time to be alive. <laughs> I can agree. I can agree. I mean, yeah. I mean. Is is messed up with uh, Corona, but yeah. I, I can agree. Yeah. All right, hold on for a second. I got to do one more thing. One more thing. Hold on. Okay. All right, we're gonna. I'm jumping off. Is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down. I hope I get the fly. I don't know why. Why I feel.